Hey, Ethan's. No, I didn't get to make it to the Reason Rally. Wish I could have, but it just fell on the wrong weekend. It's been a lot of atheist meetups that I've missed out on in the past. Uh, some for this reason, some for that reason, but they all center around one particular reason, which I no longer have. Unfortunately, this particular meetup just fell on the wrong weekend. Uh, one week before, one week after I could have gone, that weekend couldn't go. Um, like I said, I have freed up a particular nuisance that wouldn't let me go places, um, and now I can. So hopefully the next meetup that occurs, I'll get to go to, and you guys can see me there. Uh, I did, however, get to go to Duluth, Georgia, which is on the north side of Atlanta, and listen to Richard Dawkins speak once again. Now, this was an event being held by... Um, a college here in Georgia. They wanted uh, they wanted to bring in Professor Dawkins and have him speak. And two different um, college groups of students uh, were were promoting this and trying to get it to occur. And apparently, there's a little bit of resistance, but the college caved and allowed it to happen, and it went off fantastically. Uh, Professor Dawkins uh, got up there. He was uh, introduced by Jerry Coyne, uh, and uh, Sean Faircloth gave a brief speech prior to that, uh, got to meet Mr. Faircloth, who was a uh, very gracious and, and a, a fascinating person, um, becoming a very quick fan of, of, of this gentleman, um, but they, they spoke uh, briefly before him, um, but the man of the hour was, of course, Mr. Dawkins, and uh, he came out there and he talked about the history of evolution to a, to a small extent, but more so about how evolution has affected the world since its inceptions. He started off talking about the contemporaries to, to uh, Darwin in Blythe Matthews, Wallace, and, um, and, uh, and, and a few others, and talked about how some of them didn't really get it, and then some kind of got it, and even Darwin himself didn't fully get what this discovery was all about. Um, he called the, the the lecture was called the Five Bridges of Darwinism, and he listed the five bridges as number one, natural selection as a force of weeding out weakness in species. And he talked about how several of these different people got that one, and uh, then uh, only three got the second one, which was natural selection can can drive evolutionary change. Um, number three, imagine the imaginative grasp of the importance of natural selection in explaining the all of life. Um, you know, you really weed out there. Number four, which Darwin alone crossed of his contemporaries, the bridge to public understanding and appreciation. He he actually thought this was important enough that the world needed to know, not the scientific community. The world needed to know this. And then he finished up with the fifth bridge that he says that even Darwin didn't have the opportunity to experience. And that's what he labeled as Neo-Darwinism. The union of Darwinian evolution and Mendelian genetics. Because, of course, you know they didn't know as much about DNA as we do today. And how it turned into, uh, as he coined it, the digital Darwinism. Um, and where he uh, and he discussed some some of the other people again from back then, like Jenkins, uh, who tried who thought that it was uh, some kind of blending of, of things, uh, but that was not the case. And uh, he was very very charismatic as always. Some very funny bits as well, but uh, but just a fascinating lecture. And I, I hope that uh, if he if he comes to your area with the same thing, that you get a chance to see it. Um, meanwhile. Look for me in the future, and, and certainly please keep sending the invites to the different events. Uh, I, I hope to get to go more now that I no longer have that ball and chain hanging me, holding me back so that I can't go anymore. But don't take my word for it. Think for yourselves.